There's actually a, bit, a fair bit of science behind environmental water. It's not just, some people think, oh, you just put water in and the birds will come. And, uh, and you quite often see that, you know, just, yeah, just, just add water. But it's, it's actually not quite that simple. You know, when the water gets added, how much, um, uh, what time of year, all, all is really important as to what will drive the ecosystem. So Lake Cullen received environmental water in spring 2016 throughout through autumn 2017. So we managed to deliver about 20,000 megalitres of water at about 100 to 300 megalitres a day. So water comes into Lake Cullen to target the maintenance of the submerged aquatic plants, so enhance the aquatic plants, and, and which is a typical of an intermittent saline lake. And this will in turn provide habitat for water birds to thrive in. With the environmental watering, it's, it's kind of about trying to mimic natural processes, um, not just have a recipe that says turn the tap on every, every year on the 1st of September and let it fill up. And in natural systems, there's often chaos, and there's built-in chaos of, you know, things happen at different times of year, or wetlands might half fill sometimes and then dry and then completely fill, and all that chaos actually creates diversity. There's habitat niches created by wetlands filling to different levels or drying out at different times of year which will stimulate different plants to grow. So environmental watering does need to mimic that sort of natural chaos. And the CMA, I think up to date, have, done, have been doing a really good job of, um, of basically they're trying to mimic those, um, those natural wetting and drying processes. My um, experience with Cullen's Lake has been through field and game, and Cullen's Lake has been one of our premier spots for the conservation battle and so that's how I came to know Cullen's Lake. It was just a live, living, active wetland. Um, I can't describe it, it's just something that, that, that's part of me, something that had to be preserved. Waterbirds have responded to the environmental flows that were implemented over the last couple of years in, in a very positive way. The last count in mid-January we got up to 27,000 waterbirds which is the highest number we've recorded since environmental flows were um, directed into the wetland. There's still a lot of um, deeper water, deeper open water species present at the moment but there's more of the um, shorebirds that prefer the muddy, shallow shorelines also turning up now as well. Yeah, in, in the earlier period, um, bitterns turned up in quite a big way yeah, for the first time for quite a long while. We've seen quite a positive response over time from the, uh, from the, the water birds. The Australasian bittern is a very significant species. There's possibly only about a thousand uh, individuals left in the world and, and, al and also um, it's classified as endangered under the, the National Act. 16 individuals were recorded in this reed bed behind the 